Here we go, back again with another video. I'm absolutely gutted with that performance last night. And I think we all know things need to change. Something needs to change at this club. Well, Rangers fans came on, lots of Rangers fans came on and said exactly what happened. They said, Bale draws the life out of the players. And look at last night, they're a different side completely to when Michael, Michael Mowbray, Tony Mowbray was in charge. He's like a Dementor from Harry Potter. He's drawn the life out of the players. Pritchard and Bale were having a set two, apparently as well. My source has been on, said there was a bit of arguments between Bale and Pritchard. Looks like Pritchard's gonna be on his way. If that's the case, apparently clapping to the fans, waving to the fans last night. So is this only gonna get worse before it gets better? <sighs> well, let's face it. You know, when Tony Mowbray was here, when Mowbray was here, we were so close, we were so close. Uh, the football was so much better, there seemed to be all togetherness amongst the players. They were happy, they were laughing, they were enjoying life, enjoying the football. But now, they look so miserable. It's so sad to see. You know, they just look like a, a lost, a lost, lo lost boys. They look like lost boys completely. I've got a video at the end I'll show you. It's Stephen Hensel having his opinion again. Absolutely top friend. And you know, at the end of the day, he's probably right. Remember back in the days when Donald was here and KLD was buying the shares? John, John Ruddick told me this. He reminded me about this. He kind of deceived the fans. Deceived the fans of how many shares he had, didn't he, at the club? Dogs going mental down here. Dogs going mental. But he kind of deceived the fans of how many shares he had at the club. But, so there's something not right, something not right somewhere. Don't quite understand what's going on. But yeah, Tony Mowbray was doing a decent job. All he did, all he needed, and he knew this, this is, this is why it started to go wrong. Because we were playing good football, got good results against Southampton, and he knew. And he could sense something wasn't right with the strike force and with what was going on. He wanted one or two acquisitions in this club. That's all he wanted, he wanted one or two players. And he went to the board, he went to Speakman and asked them, and they sacked him. They sacked him. You could see there was something going on. I'm away for the weekend. I'm here, you know, end of the day, to help my daughter out with something. So I couldn't go to the match last night. I didn't miss much. But Tony Mowbray only wanted one or two players to come in. You could see the problems, the issues. You know, we're close between mid-table top 10 to top six and he knew it he knew it were close to promotion he had something good going on there the real camaraderie with all the players and he knew one or two players away from being a top side and he went to the board went to speakman and he asked them and the board basically didn't want to spend any money buy any players in so they've sacked them and they've made this they've caused this rift in amongst the fans the board you know from the players to the to the head coach the players can see it the players are not happy right now this is only going to get worse, not better. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I've never been this far away from home. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I've never been this far away from home. Some England shirts. Oh, definitely. Camden Hells, we'll taste this and we'll give it a review. See what it's like. I need this after yesterday's match. <laughs> Time for a bit of scran. Well, that was a nice light lager, 4.6. I'm gonna give it seven out of 10. Not too bad, not too bad indeed. Mind you, that was for sharing for two. So a nice snack, a nice, a nice early afternoon snack. I reckon I'd look good in that. I reckon I'd look good in that. I'm going to pop some tags. I got $20 in my pocket. Oh, oh, thrift shop, baby. <laughs> oh, I wasn't recording. Oh. Now I am. Go on. Please. Mac and more thrift shop. <laughs> really scary. Oh dear. 
So, Speakman, KLD, have caused this rift. And I did say in a previous video, I said in a previous video, if Beale doesn't work out, Speakman needs to go. And I stand by it now, more than ever. Speakman needs to go from this club. KLD needs to either start thinking about the future, thinking about getting somebody else in. If he's not going to change things the way they are, for me, he needs to sell the club. He hasn't got any money to take this club any further forward. After last night's shambles, the fans are against Bale already. And he's also complaining about the fans. Bale, in his interview, complained about the fans because they should be getting behind him and the team. And he was also blaming the players as well. For me, there's only one person to blame at this club. Speakman for getting rid of Mowbray. And Bale is now in. Bale needs to go. If the hat fits, <laughs> it doesn't mean head's too big. <laughs> big fat head. <laughs> Matches the club colours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My sauce has been on as well. He says there's a rift already. Not getting on is Dodds and Bale. So maybe I was being a bit harsh for saying get rid of everybody last night. Because when Dodds was in charge, he did beat West Brom and did beat Leeds. But apparently now Dodds and Bale are not getting on, along with Pritchard. <sighs> I think it's about time, KLD. Got rid of Speakman and Beale. The chopping block for them, the chopping block, definitely the chopping block. We need something to change because I can't see any way out of this. It, the, the players, all the players just look dejected. And like I said before, I can see players leaving in this transfer window now the way things are. I tell you what, there's more life in that dummy than there wasn't Beale on the touchline. So if you didn't know where I was right now, I'm in Liverpool, yes, Liverpool to see my daughter. And we're in the bombed out church. Never been here. It was bombed in the Blitz. If you can leave a donation, you can come in and visit. Something to see, it's different. So this church was built in 1791, but it was bombed in the Blitz in 1941. There was a bomb that landed inside the church, but all the outside walls all stood up, but all inside was blitzed. Unbelievable. The clock stopped at 3.36, and it's been like this ever since. The bombed out church in Liverpool just at the top of Bond Street. So there we go. We need Speakman and Beal out and if KLD won't Get rid of those two. He needs to sell the club and find a new owner for me. Leave us your thoughts and comments down below. Got a couple of people's comments now. We've got Steve Hensel, yes, on the channel again. Absolutely fantastic lad. And I'm sure he'll have something to say about the situation. If you're enjoying the videos, please subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time. Oh, when hopefully... Right, well, it won't be. There'll be no fucking change. There'll be no fucking change. I can't see anything happening. We stuck with Bill for the long haul. He needs to go, simple as. Speakman and Bale just need to go. Just being told also, I don't know if it's true or not, that MV is not coming to Sunderland now. MV is not coming to Sunderland. I didn't think he would do in the first place. I didn't think we'd pay his wages. I didn't think we'd go for a 33-year-old. So, you know, end of the day, watch this space. What's happening to Sunderland at this moment in time? It's driving me bonkers. We're so close to a good side, so close to a good side, and now we seem a million miles away. Let's just hope something changes pretty quick. We really need something to change pretty quick. What's up, Sunderland fans? Mike here from Black Cats Nation. Um, here to just give my opinion on Beal.
frankly. Um, it's just, he's tactically inept. He's completely the wrong guy for the job. It's definitely a panic assignment. Um, when he first came in, I was saying we need to trust in him, we need to give him a chance. I was trying to find the positives in his previous roles, like at Rangers, like the win ratios there and stuff like that. But everything the Rangers fans warned us about is what's happening right now. The style that we're playing in, the team looks so flat throughout. The team was flat, the manager and the bench, no emotion whatsoever. And that starts to rub off on the crowd. Literally, you're killing the atmosphere. You are killing the atmosphere. He needs to be gone. Beal needs to be gone. I would rather have no manager, a caretaker manager. I'd rather let the lads run amok themselves at this rate compared to what we've got. Pay the money. Where's the money for Ross Stewart and all the other signings that went out? Where's that gone? 40,000 attendants at games like Friday night. Where's that money going? I'm sorry, but there is money somewhere that's not being tapped into. We can afford to get a decent manager, not head coach, manager through the door. And if Speakman is the blocker on that because he wants control over the signings, then I'm sorry, he needs to be gone as well. Just my two cents. Lots of rants over this for the next few weeks, I'm sure, on everybody's channel. Make sure you give my channel a follow. It's at Black Cats Nation on YouTube, and I'll see you over there. Bye. Sorry if my drinking offends yet, but as a Sunderland fan, you need that. Where do we start, Terry? Yeah, where do we start? Start right at the top of the owner. I mean, last night, no, we'll sort of about last night. Let's talk about last night's game. After 35 minutes, me and my daughter decided to go back and sit in the Quinny's bar because it was it was just abandoned what was going to happen. We we're going to lose 1 0. You could see it a mile off. So we sat down in Quinny's bar and we never went back up in the second half. We just sat there. I ended up getting ordering two double gins and tonics and they totally messed my yard up, so I ended up with three doubles, but I'm not complaining about, and they give me one for free because they parted, when you might as well just have it. So I was like, oh, well, I'll have that. So sat in there, Quinny's bar, watching the match in the second half. They're taking my happiness out of watching my club. Speakman and Beale are taking my happiness out. Do we blame KLD as well? Everybody could see it was happening. We weren't going to score a month on Sundays the way he's got us set up now. There's no point putting a striker on the way he's playing. It's just... I've said it for years. Speakman needs to go. Bale needs to go today, tomorrow. You know what I mean? Right away. Um, how is KLD letting all this happen? And I've said about KLD and I've got fucking abuse off people for KLD. He has got no money. He's come from a rich family and he's got inheritance. And he doesn't want to spend his inheritance. What's the point of having a billionaire owner who doesn't want to spend. We get over 40,000 fans on a Saturday when we're at home and we've got the, probably the lowest or third lowest um, wage structure in the championship. You've got teams who get 12,000, 10,000, 15,000, doubling our wages. How can they afford it? So how can they afford to double their, like, pay more than us? And we're getting 40 odd thousand. I mean, I'm not going. I, I, I want to go next Saturday because it's, it's not just Sunderland Football Club, it's Sunderland City. What I love, I love being from Sunderland. I am a Mac, I'm a Wearsider. I love my town. I don't want to be, I don't want to be born anywhere else. We've got the beaches, we've got everything, you know what I mean? I love my city, not just the football club. And that football club represents my city and they're not representing it at the best at this moment in time. So for me, I've been watching all the YouTubers, everyone from Michael Bowers, to Jalzy and Steve, to Green Folk, who's a brilliant podcast. It's one of the best podcasts out there. Um, and everybody's just down. Everybody wants them out. Is that not seeing something that none of the YouTubers are disagreeing on anything? That's got to be a, that's got to be something. You know what I mean? And for KLD to let just this just go on, it's it's absolutely bananas. You know, if he's not willing to spend his money, he needs a gun. 
You know what I mean? Put us back on the market. I mean, one Santori, what the fuck's he do at our club? What's one Santori do? He spent, he, he's in Uruguay being a politician. That's what he does. He's a politician in Uruguay. He's more bothered about coming the bloody mayor or whatever you have in Uruguay, prime minister, whatever. He's more bothered about doing that than anything about our club. He's only invested in our club because he says you'll, you'll, you'll double your investment. Because that's all it is for KLD, to double investment thing. That's all it is. It's him to make money. I've said it for years that I, I don't think it's right. Steve Harvey finding these brilliant players. Yes, but Speakman's time to find the ones he wants. And we don't need them ones at this moment in time. We need experience. We need older, more experienced heads. I tell you now, I would have Danny Collins as the manager tomorrow because he watches every single Sunderland game and he talks 100%. He talks 100% common sense. And he, I mean, I spoke to him privately and he can't stand how, how it's set up at the moment. You know what I mean? But obviously he can't see out because he's paid by the club. But that's where I think it's wrong. I call my company I work for, you know what I mean? And you can see the players are not happy. Pete George, I'm left to believe he told fucking Beal to fuck off yesterday on the pitch. He told Beal, I think he said, shut the fuck up to Beal while he was playing. That's why, you know, it's, we all can see him when none of us are trained managers. You could see yesterday that we we're going to get beat, simple as. And, um, it's, it's breaking my heart. You know, when I go to match, people see it like, you know, because I, I complain sometimes about the prices, but it's all about the experience for me and my daughter. I mean, I spent probably 60, 70 quid yesterday in the ground, maybe more. You know what I mean? I mean, I got the expensive tickets for Quinny's Bar, and they're not cheap. Uh, and then I bought a chicken burger. Lucy had a hot dog. I had another pie because I'm a fat bastard. Um... And then a bag of crisps. I had I had three pints before the match kicked off. And then obviously I got them free drinks at half time. You know what I mean? And I, I, I on average at a home game, yeah, I spend between 70 and 100 quid easy. Easy to the stage of my life. Inside, maybe go to a club shop, get a new woolly hat, get a new scarf, gloves. You know what I mean? Even just a key ring. You know what I mean? It, it still all adds up. And for next Saturday, I just don't think I want to gamble because of... I want to show that my disappointment and how they're running our club. And I would love people to join us. I would happily go down to the stadium and stand outside the, the, the main entrance and stay there all game and not go in and tell Speakman and KLD what we think of him when they're going in to, to demand proper questions because I don't know anybody in this red and white army. Do you? You know what I mean? We're never going to get told anything. I think it's a load of shite. They've got to, they get told what questions they can answer, ask and stuff like that. What's the point of that? You you want to go into a meeting and answer the questions we all want to answer. Saying, why is Speakman still here? He brought in Pardrew. Uh, Pardrew you know, it's, it's his second bad manager. And it's it's just a yes man for him. It's Jube. Jube. you got Jube there. Um, who needs a rest. Everybody can see him a rest. But he's getting, Beal's getting told to play him. And we all can see that he needs and see that he needs a rest. Every in the body in the fucking ground can see he's a young lad, he's 17. He needs a fucking rest, man. <sighs> I know I've gone on a long and I know it's Terry's channel, folks, so I do apologise about that. But Terry asked me to come on to give my side as well. So as he's, as he's a good mate and a brilliant bloke, absolutely fantastic bloke, Terry is. Um, yeah, so. Something seriously wrong from the running to onto the football pitch. It's just, it's, it's not happy at the moment. I, I think I was more happy when we were in League One than we are now. You know what I mean? That just felt a bit more of a buzz, didn't it? You know what I mean? When we went two back to backs, but then obviously we got the Stu. Well, at the time we thought they were the same in Greece, Stuart Donald and Salmon Pants, but now we're not. They're not. There wasn't, but it was just felt good if you know what I mean because it feels good better than at this time we are now like I would love to know if any Sunderland fan managed to do dry January because I, I lasted two days fucking watching that shit <sighs> but uh, yeah at this moment in time they are not representing the city I'm from and like I said 
that football club represents our city. We've got no shipyards, we've got no coal mines left, we've got no glass factories, we've, got, we've just got Nissan. And that's the only other thing what represents us is our football club. Represents the people, represents what's about being from Sunderland, hard work and graft people, lovely, helpful people. It'll do anything for anybody. You go on holiday and you see another Sunderland fan who you don't know, you talk to him, don't you? You, you, you crack onto them, you end up sitting and spend, spending time on holiday with them. Then, you know, any other football club, you don't really get that. You don't. I, I talk to people who I've got nothing in common with, but we've got Sunderland Football Club in common with, you know what I mean? So we get on. But, like, apart from the football, there's there's nothing else we've got in common, you know? But that's what Sunderland Football Club does. Um, Just heartbreaking. Fucking the see the Mags gun was uh, was seeing you crying on Netflix, and um, I see me crying on this. You know what I mean? Because it, it, it's it's hard, mate. It's 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 hard. I love my club, and I've said it all along. I don't trust Speakman. I don't trust KLD because I can't trust somebody who's just got inheritance who does has never worked a day in his life. I've got, especially when I come from a working background, we got our house took off us during the minor strikes and how, we didn't have a pot to piss in. And I find it very hard to trust anybody who's got inherited, who's just fell into money. But that's just me. But, um, yeah, sorry it's gone on a bit long, Terry. Yeah. Tell me if it's too long and I'll, I'll do another one. But, yeah, take care, folks. Wish you all the best. Subscribe to Terry if you haven't. Take care now. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed those comments and enjoyed the video. Take care. God bless me. God go with you. We'll see you next time on The Mad Mistake.